time now for the best in mystery. Tonight on Masters of Mystery, an exciting melodrama entitled Murder in Haste. All I ask is that you forget you ever saw me. I could go to the police. I'll make it worth your while. I'll pay handsomely. And if I say no? Then I'll have no choice. But murder. <laughs> Good evening. This is Don Dowd, your host for Mystery Time. Back again to introduce another in ABC Radio's great Monday through Friday lineup of mystery dramas. Every night at this time, a new and different story. Our drama tonight on Masters of Mystery, presented live from New York, is written by Eleanor Beeson and titled Murder in Haste. Not everyone gets a chance for a fresh start, a new identity. When Elbert Taylor gets such an opportunity, he feels that Lady Luck has done him a wonderful favor. Until he discovers that it takes more than a change of name to wipe out a guilty past. As Masters of Mystery brings you Murder in Haste. She lay where she had fallen, close to the fireplace. Her head had struck against the iron and iron. Blood slowly gathered in the pool on the bricks. I called her name. Helen. Helen. She did not answer. I hadn't meant to hurt her badly. But now my wife was dead. I bent over and felt her heart. And Helen was dead, all right. We'd had our last quarrel. And now I'd killed her. It took me only a moment to decide on my course of action. If I called the police, they'd never believe it was an accident. I had to get away. I changed my name. I'd no longer be able to tell her. I'd get a fresh start in a new city. I grabbed up my hat and coat, packed a bag, took what money I had, and slipped out of the house. Two hours and twenty minutes later, I was standing on the observation platform of the limited express bound for New York. Uh, nice night, isn't it? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I-, I didn't hear you come out. I'm sorry. I said it was a nice night. I... Yeah, yes, yes. I saw you running for the train when we were pulling out. Just made it, didn't you? I, yeah, kind of close. Mm. Been in Miami long? Um, no, no. Been fishing off the key just uh, a week or so. I see. Uh, my name's Ricketts. I'm glad to know you. I'm Brown, uh, Richard Brown. Uh-huh. Are uh, you going up to New York, Brown? Uh, yes. Well, I... Uh, I guess I'll be getting in touch. That's a good idea. I'll, uh, go with you. I knew it was me, the ultimate man. Ricketts was a plain girl cop, and there could only be one reason why he was interested in me. He, he stayed right behind me as I walked back through the train for my seat. I wondered if he'd even sit down beside me when I got to it. Then, two feet from my seat, he hit me. My luggage was on the baggage rack over the seat. With my initials on it in, in big letters. E.T. Ricketts was just waiting for me to stop. Just waiting for proof I was out to tell her. Then he'd make the arrest. But I didn't stop. I kept kept on going. Ah, uh, Brown. Uh, yeah? Isn't this your seat? Why, uh, no. I have a compartment up ahead. Oh, I see. Well, good night, Brown. Good night. Ricketts dropped into a seat and I kept right on going. There was only one place I could go, the club car. At least I could get a drink there and, and try to think. Oh, bartender, make it on Manhattan Drive, please. <clears throat> Here's a stool next to me, sir. What? Oh, uh, thanks, thanks. Okay. Going to New York? Yes. Ought to be cold up there this time of year. Lots of snow and all that. Yes, that's course so. <laughs> you know, I'm as excited as a kid. Haven't seen snow for an age. Matter of fact, I haven't set foot in America for five years. Great to be back. I get a kick out of just talking to Americans again. Yes. Uh, I was sitting in my compartment a few minutes ago, thinking... Uh, You've got a compartment? Uh, yes, yes, a couple of cars ahead. Well, uh, my name's Brown, Mr. Jameson. Leslie Jameson. Jameson. Oh, no, wait a minute. You're not the mystery writer. <laughs> yeah, afraid I am. <laughs> oh, thanks, Brown. Well, here's to bigger and better mysteries. Okay. <laughs> 
So, uh, you say you left Buenos Aires? Yes. Planned to anyway, but made it a little earlier on account of that nasty business about my assistant. Oh, I tell you. Probably go back in a year or so. Say, you ever uh, read anything of mine, Mr. Brown? I can't say I've done much reading in the detective storyline. Mm. Uh, you have a serial running in one of the magazines right now, haven't you? Yes, yes. Murder in Haste. I don't suppose you're reading it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. If I'd known I was going to meet the author, I'd have boomed up on it. <laughs> don't apologize, Mr. Brown. Well, how about a nightcap before we turn in? Well, I'm turning. Well, it's early yet, Jameson. Surely you're not going to give up the ship so soon. Well, I have to confess I'm pretty tired. I've been rattling on about myself all evening. Oh, there you are. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, that's beautiful brandy. Mm, I'm better. Well, why don't we drink some? Huh? Oh, well, uh, you name it. Very well. Here's to crime. A mighty profitable business. To me, at least. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, tell me about your literary agent. You were saying you'd never met him personally? Oh, uh, Farrell. Oh, yeah, great agent. I've often wondered what he looks like. You've never even been to New York? No, no, never. Oh, well, Mr. Brown, it's close to midnight. I feel... Uh, uh, Jameson, what about this cereal you're running? Maybe you could bring me up to date I'll on tell it. Tell you all about it tomorrow. Right now, I'm awfully tired. Well, it's early yet. I'll see you here. I hate to be rude, but I'll have to ask you... Like... Good heavens. What's that? I'm trying to stop her. I hope it's... When I came to, it was dark. I was lying in a tangle of wreckage all around me. And all around me, I could hear shouts and cries, the hiss of steam. But in the tangled mess of steel and wood that had been a pulling coach, I was miraculously safe. I pulled me through, lit a match, and saw that Leslie Jameson hadn't been so lucky. He was dead. I couldn't do a thing for him, and the hiss of flames warned me the wreckage was a fire. I found where the window had been and managed to crawl out. I was pulling myself through the window when somebody came running up with a flashlight. Ah, uh, just a second. Now, let me help you. Oh, thanks. Just take my hand. Oh, easy now. Go down for the broken glass. Yeah, that's it. Uh... Thanks. thanks. You all right? I think so. I'm a little dizzy. Shaking. Oh, sure, that's natural. Oh, it's you, Brown. Huh? Oh, look it. Yeah. Hey, you're lucky. This coach got the worst of it. Look that far. Yeah. Just got out in time. Say, that uh, fellow you were drinking with at the bar. Is he still in there? Oh, oh. I'm pretty sure he's Albert E. Taylor. Met his wife in Miami. Is he still in there? Oh. No, he left a few minutes before the crash. Ah. Well, you uh, better get on up ahead, Brown. I gotta give him a hand here. Can you uh, make it to the crossing? There's a highway restaurant up there. Sure. I'm okay. Thanks. Okay, Brown. Take it easy. <laughs> the fire crawl closer. Then as my mind cleared, I saw what an opportunity had been given to me. There was a risk, but I had to take it. I crawled back into the wreckage to let me change his body. I took his wallet, his ring, his watch. I left my ring and watch engraved with my initials with him. I was left of him. Then as the flames crawled steadily closer, I found his briefcase and baggage and dragged them out of the wreck. And ten minutes later, with my identity now changed to Leslie Jameson, I staggered into the restaurant at the grade crossing where the derailment had occurred. Hey, Smith, we got a doctor in the back room. Come on, I'll take you. No, 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 I'm just a little shaken up. I'm going to get out of here. I thought I could hire a car or get a bus to New York. You were in the wreck? Yes, I was. What's your name? Uh, I'm... I'm Leslie Jameson. Leslie Jameson? Say, are you the fellow who writes those murder mysteries? Yes, yes, that's right. Well, if that ain't a coincidence... Only last night I made a bet with Frank, that's my boyfriend, as to which one would turn out to be the murderer in that serial you're running in the post. Well, that's very flattering. I, I wonder if you could help me about, about the boyfriend. Well, sure, Mr. Jameson. But how about giving me an advance tip on the murderer, huh? Which, which one? Well, I, I don't think it would be fair to tell you. Now, give me a fast cup of coffee, will you, young lady? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Oh, Rick. Oh, hello. It's pretty rough out there. Three cars smashed up. How do you feel, Brown? Well, that's Leslie Jameson, the writer. Huh? I thought your name was Brown. Well, of course, I... Well, you know how it is, I... Here's your coffee. Thanks. Uh, no, Mr. Brown, I don't know how it is. How is it? Well, it's the most way she because I've been watching it. Oh. Oh, yeah, I get it. I've been reading Mrs. Jameson's serial in the post murder and hate. I'm a little bet with my boyfriend on who the murderer is. Well, I can tell you that. I read the last installment last night. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> 
Got it at the newsstand in Miami. Well, we ain't got it here yet. Well, Mr. Jameson, who done it? Well, I don't want to spoil the story for you. You want to finish it. Uh, afraid I won't buy another copy of the magazine, huh? Well, it's a matter of, uh, of ethics. The writer can't... Oh, what do you mean, ethics? I know how it ends. Please, Mr. Jameson, I can tell Frank I got it straight from the author's mouth. Ah, oh, come on. What goes, huh? Uh, I don't want... Oh, besides, there's a car driving. I can't say I can hide. That's for me. I'm driving up to New York. Mr. Jameson here wants to get to New York, too. Was that right, Jameson? Why don't you come with me? Give me a hand with the driver. Come on. All right. Well, first oh, give oh. the uh, young lady a break. Tell her who the murderer was. Well, I'm sorry. It's, it's against my principles. Well, it's your business. Come on. Oh, I miss. It was the butler. <laughs> Hotel space in New York, Jameson? Well, not, uh, not yet. I thought I'd arrange it when I went. Ah, you've been away a long time, haven't you? It's probably not a decent room to be had. Oh, is it that thing? Oh, it's worse. I think I might be able to fix you up at the uh, Midbury. I uh, know the man. Oh, I, 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 I call him. Oh, oh, forget it, Jameson. Glad to help you. After all, aren't we both in the same business? <laughs> in a manner of speaking. <laughs> before the manager had tipped off the reporter that I was Leslie Jameson. And as I crossed the lobby, I heard her flash my phone. The next day, there were pictures of me in all the papers. There was a story on the inside pages of the paper that Albert Taylor, wanted for killing his wife in Miami, had been identified as one of the dead in the train wreck in Georgia. That should have meant I was safe. But now, five million people had seen my picture as Leslie Jameson. What if one of them had known me down in Miami? I waited with mounting apprehension for the knock on the door that would announce the police. And I wished Helen was back again alive. Helen would know what to do. She was a domineering woman, but she knew how to make decisions. Then suddenly the phone rang. It was the manager to tell me that Mrs. Jameson was on her way out. My wife. I hadn't even known Jameson was married. I walked up and down, my mind whirling frantic. I had to get away, and then the door buzzer rang. It rang again. And again. And I had to answer it. There was nothing else I could do. Just a moment. Leslie. Hello. What? What do you Maybe want? I'd better come in. Well. Well, what? What are you going to do about it? You're an awfully simple sort, aren't you, mister? Mr. Whatever your name is. Well, I suppose I am. How did you expect to get away with it after all the publicity? Where is he? What have you done to him? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Jameson. I can explain. Well, maybe you'd better. But your husband was killed in that train wreck in Georgia. I, I had reasons for wanting to disappear, so I took his identity. I never meant to keep it until just... Just what? Look, there's, there's nothing we can do for your husband now. He was killed. You believe that, don't you? I don't know. I'm going to leave town. All, all I ask is that you forget you ever saw me. I see. Well, is that all you're going to say? You, what are you going to do? I could go to the police. No, but wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, I can make it worth your while to... to, to, to Stop, to... Barry. Does, uh... Does anyone know you're here in New York? No, no. Hmm, very fortunate. You see, Leslie and I didn't get along. Matter of fact, we've been separated for some time. He said he was cutting me out of his will. So, if Leslie dead, I don't get anything at all. But, if Leslie alive... Wait a minute. Why, you wouldn't... Why not? He could retire right now and live off his royalties without doing another lick. You, you, you want me to keep this up? Of course. Don't be ridiculous, this... There are a dozen reasons why I can't fill discovered in a week. You have his baggage. Yes? I know his signature. I can imitate it perfectly. I know his background like a book. You may as well get used to it, Mr. Jameson. Well, I tell you, I won't do it. But it's the most fantastic thing I ever heard of. There's a Lieutenant Rickett down in the lobby. He's quite interested in our relationship. 
you like, of course, I'll bring them up to date. Oh, yes, Mrs. Jameson. <laughs> Albert, darling, just call me Ruth. Self-control at all. Twenty-eight thousand dollars in three months, besides the deposits I need to your account. Here, look at these bills. Look at them. I haven't got a penny. Are you all through? There's your quarterly royalty check due tomorrow. Well, that'll only pay part of the bills. Mm-hmm. It's not paying any of them, darling. It's going into my account. I see. And maybe only some clever way of getting out from under these bills. That's your worry, dear. Not mine. <laughs> You could finish your book, dear. Sure, finish the book. Write a lovely Jameson history. Well, then I suppose you'll have to think of something else. Ruth, be honest with me. How long do you intend to carry this on? Why, indefinitely, dear. There's to be no end. There is, if you want one. There's always the police. You could have been decent about it. Instead of spending money so, so irrationally. There could have been plenty without bleeding me to death. I think I've been quite fair with you. You've got kept your freedom. Freedom? Freedom? Six months now. No sleep on worry. You can't eat. Can't. This I've isn't Hounded by worry, night and day, trying to dodge my own shadow, afraid all the time. An irrational woman spending money as if she were insane, holding a dagger over my head. Get hold of yourself. And now there's no way out. Trapped. Run into a corner. No way to turn. No end in sight. Nothing to do but go on and on until I break and unless... Help me. Um, Right. What are you doing? Stay away from me! Yes, sir. You're, you're the desk sergeant. That's right. What can I do for you? You, you, you can take down a statement. What's the matter, mister? I've... 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 i just killed... my wife. You did it. Been looking for you all night. Let's see. You may as well know she's not my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know, Mr. Jameson. She was your assistant in Buenos Aires. What? You say she was shaking you down. What did she have on you, huh? My assistant? Buenos Aires? Yeah. That's right. Your assistant. Have you, uh, have you had a lapse of memory or something, Jameson? The assistant? I remember now. Now tell me, Jameson. What was she threatening to take you to the police? Huh? Okay. But a three-year-old would have known it was a bluff. That's the last thing in the world she would have done. You don't know that. She wasn't rational. She would have done anything. Not if it meant her neck, pal. What? What's happened to your memory, Damon? It was all over Buenos Aires six months ago. Every newspaper. She's wandered down there for murder. <laughs> This is Don Dowd again, your host for Mystery Time. You have just heard Masters of Mystery live from New York. 